I spent a significant portion of my teenage years playing squash, hitting the ball up and down the walls, running around the court and in the gym, competing in tournaments around the world. I was 18 years old when one of the most important squash events of the year was approaching. I had been training extremely hard and decided to supplement my training with a special diet. While my eating habits had always been quite healthful, a necessary part of my training regimen, I had occasionally allowed myself the luxury of junk food. However, in the four weeks leading up to the tournament, I ate only the leanest fish and chicken, whole grain carbohydrates and fresh fruit and vegetables. The reward for my abstinence, I resolved, would be a two-day junk food binge. As soon as the tournament was over, I went straight to my favorite hamburger joint. I ordered four hamburgers and as I walked away from the counter with my prize, I understood how Pavlov's dogs felt at the sound of the bell. I sat myself down and hurriedly unwrapped the first portion of my reward. But as I brought the burger closer to my mouth, I stopped. For a whole month, I had looked forward to this meal. And now, when it was right in front of me, presented to me on a plastic platter, I did not want it. I tried to figure out why, and it was then that I came up with the happiness model, otherwise known as the hamburger model. I realized that in the month I'd been eating well, my body felt cleansed and I was surging with energy. I knew that I would enjoy eating the four burgers, but that afterwards I would feel unpleasant and fatigued. Staring at my untouched meal, I thought of four kinds of hamburgers, each representing a distinct archetype, with each archetype describing a distinct pattern of attitudes and behaviors. The first type of hamburger is the one I had just turned down, the tasty junk food burger. Eating this hamburger would yield present benefit in that I would enjoy it and future detriment in that I would subsequently not feel well. The experience of present benefit and future detriment defines the hedonism archetype. The hedonist lives by the maxim, seek pleasure and avoid pain. She focuses on enjoying the present while ignoring the potential negative consequences of her actions. The second hamburger type which came to mind was a tasteless vegetarian burger made with only the most healthful ingredients, which would afford me future benefit in that I would subsequently feel good and healthy and present detriment in that I would not enjoy eating it. The corresponding archetype is that of the rat race. The rat racer subordinating the present to the future suffers now for the purpose of some anticipated gain. The third hamburger type the worst of all possible burgers, is both tasteless and unhealthful. Eating it, I would experience present detriment in that it tastes bad and suffer future detriment in that it is unhealthful. The parallel to this burger is the nihilism archetype. This archetype describes the person who has lost his lust for life. He neither enjoys the moment nor does he have a sense of future purpose. The three archetypes that I came up with did not exhaust all possibilities. There was one more to consider. What about a hamburger that would be as tasty as the one I had turned down and as healthy as the vegetarian burger? A burger that would constitute a complete experience with both present and future benefits. This hamburger exemplifies the happiness archetype. A happy person lives secure in the knowledge that the activities that bring her enjoyment in the present will also lead to a fulfilling future. The following graph illustrates the relationship between present and future benefits in the four archetypes. The vertical axis represents the future dimension of the experience, with future benefits on the positive side and future detriment on the negative side. The horizontal axis of the graph represents the present dimension of the experience with present benefits on the positive side and present detriment on the negative side. Hedonism is about present benefit and future detriment. The red race quadrant is about future benefit and present detriment. The nihilism quadrant would be about present and future detriment. And the happiness quadrant is about present and future benefits. The archetypes, as I present them, are theoretical formulations of types, not of actual people. 
To varying degrees and in different combinations, we all have characteristics of the rat racer, the hedonist, the nihilist, and the one who is happy. We all sometimes reside in one of the four quadrants. For example, we all sometimes do things that provide us with present benefit, but little future benefit, uh, whether eating an unhealthy but tasty meal, watching a favorite sitcom, or playing video games, or hanging out in a fun place without accomplishing anything in particular. In moderation, there is everything right with being a hedonist. All of us at times find ourselves in the rat race quadrant, focusing on future benefit with no concern for the present. For example, we may be putting a lot of tedious work studying for an exam or struggling to finish a project at work or refraining from eating an extra dessert because we know how we'll feel in the morning. Once again, it's inevitable that the right thing to do at times is to sacrifice our present experience for an important future outcome. And unfortunately, no person is exempt from experiencing nihilism, whether as a result of a particular disappointment or failure or because it's just one of those days. We're human beings, not machines, and we naturally experience ups and downs throughout our lives. And then, of course, we all find ourselves in the happiness quadrant. Whether it's eating food that we love and is good for us, or spending time with people we care about and strengthening our bonds with them while having fun, or engaging in a fun project at work that will help us advance professionally. So while we're all familiar with the four quadrants and will continue to visit all four for the rest of our lives, one of the paths to a happier, more fulfilled life is to increase the amount of time we spend in the happiness quadrant. Here is what you can do. Take a few minutes to make a list of activities that provide you both present benefit, in other words, that are fun for you, and also provide future benefit, in other words, that advance you in some way or are important to you. The list may include eating particular foods or spending time with your best friend or reading material that you enjoy and that is in some way beneficial to you or engaging in a volunteer or work project that fulfills present and future benefits. Keep the list open. In other words, add new activities to the list whenever you think of something new or experience something different that is both fun and constructive. Once you've identified some activities that belong in the happiness quadrant, commit to doing them, just a little bit more than you did before. For instance, make a point of seeing your best friend for an extra hour each week. Put 45 minutes aside three times a week for reading. Volunteer for a particular project that's on your list, and so on. As long as you consistently introduce these activities into your life, even if you only engage in them for short periods of time, your happiness levels will increase markedly. You can become happier. Small changes to your daily life can make a big difference to your life as a whole.